So today I wanted to go over um, just a few things, you know, hidden by God. You know, a lot of times when we talk about that we're hidden by God, we don't really understand, you know, what that means. When we say that we're hidden by God, most people really don't understand what it means to be hidden by the Lord God. But as you're going to learn today, there are four things, four primary reasons why God would choose to hide someone. Um, and these are found in the scripture. So I just want to share the scripture here with you so you can be able to see. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, you've probably heard this plenty of times before. And it talks about that there is a time for everything. You know, there is a season for everything. And what that means is that God always work in season. God always work in season. Good afternoon, Anel. Vanessa, thank you guys so much again. Good afternoon. Appreciate the prayers. For those that are watching now and those that are tuning later on. But God always hides things for a reason. God always hides people for a specific reason. And I want you to understand that whenever God hides you, there are four primary reasons why God always hides people. If you look throughout the scripture, you're going to find out that these things apply to just about every person that God has ever hidden. And then there's a season of call, your season of appearance. There's a season, your season of your manifestations, but we're not gonna look at that much today. I want to help you understand that for those of you that feel like, man, I have just been hidden, nothing is going on. I'm trying this, it's not working. I'm going there, this not going, you know, nothing is you know coming through. Why is this happening? The first reason is you see in Ecclesiastes chapter three, one of the first reasons why God would hide someone, what God has been hiding you is that God wants to prepare you. God is hiding you because God wants to take some time to prepare you. And if you look at Ecclesiastes chapter three, it says there is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under the heaven. I want to just stop right there. There is a specific time and a specific reason for everything on this planet. So God has appointed a specific time for you to go through preparation. Listen, when it comes to the preparation of the Lord, you cannot uh, skip it. OK, and I want to say this. The way that God prepares you is going to be completely different than the way that God prepared me, because there's certain things that God would tell me not to do that God may allow you to do and vice versa. So when it comes to the preparation from the Lord, your preparation is always going to be unique to your calling. Your preparation is always going to be unique to the mantle that you carry. Your preparation is always going to be unique to your assignment. So sometimes you will see that God is doing certain things in people's lives. If you don't understand what God is doing in other people's lives before you start to put your mouth on them, before you start to criticize and call them names and call them this and all that, make sure that you understand that when God is preparing anyone that is fully yielded to him, anyone that is fully submitted to him, it is going to be different. So don't just be so quick to criticize people, especially men and women of God, because you don't know the preparation that God is taking them through. Now, I get it. There are times when they just do things outrageous. That's like, you know what? That's crazy. Even God looks at this, you know what, what they don't, this is ridiculous. Now, even though God can use our mistakes during our preparation, even though God can use our faults during our preparation, that doesn't mean that God approved it. 
That doesn't mean that God sanctioned it. That doesn't mean that God liked it. That doesn't mean get, that God enjoyed it. He's going to find some way to use it. Because when God has a calling in your life, he is always going to put you through certain training. Now, again, based on the level that God wants to elevate you, your training is going to be based off of that. Not everyone have the international ministry or global ministry. Listen, there's so many people that they've been trying to get on the national stage for years and it never worked out for them. There's some pastors right now, some ministers, right? Some people, entrepreneurs, business people that they've found tremendous success locally. And some of them have tried, tried to be successful on a global scale and they felt miserably. So you got to understand what is God preparing you for? What is your assignment that you were put on earth to do? We talked about this during our prayer session last night that God created you for a reason. God had you for a reason. So, so many people if you don't understand what your assignment is, don't expect for God to put you on a global platform, because if God put you on a global platform and you have no clue what your assignment is, you're going to influence so many people and drag them in the wrong direction. And that is why God will allow you to go through a season of intense preparation, a season of tough times. Listen, the reason why God allows you to go through tough times is not because God enjoys watching you suffer. It's not because God get pleasure out of your suffering, out of your pain. It's not because God just sits up there in heaven. And just looks at you and smiles at you while you're suffering, while you're crying, while you're in pain, while you're discouraged, while you're depressed, while you're suicidal. It is not because of that. But there's something that you're going to learn during that time that God will use for his glory. Now, if you're serving God, you can be able to use those things for the glory of God. If you're in the world, you can keep doing whatever you do and eventually it'll catch up to you. It will catch up to you in a negative way. So when God is hiding you, it's because he wants to train you for something amazing. You know, the beautiful thing about the Lord is this. You can never skip steps during the training process with God. You can never skip levels. You can never skip classes. So if God have you in the school to teach you patience, for example, when God realized that you struggle with being patient, God will allow you to be around people that would take every last nerve that you have. God will allow certain individuals in your life that will force you, that will push you to depend on him for patience. So what happened is if you miss that season, if you don't pass that season, you're going to go back and repeat that again. And there are people right now. They've been going through different training for years. God has been training them about obedience. They've been disobedient. God said, you know what? You're not going to get elevated until you pass this obedience class. So some people, first few months, same class, same thing. A few years later, and there are people right now in different areas of their lives. They're going through the same cycle over and over and over. And the thing about God is this. God is not in a rush to elevate you when you're not being obedient. God is not in a rush to promote you when you're not being obedient. God is not in a rush to bless you when you're not being obedient. As a matter of fact, God have all the time in the world because where God exists, there is no time. The Bible said that a day to us is like a thousand unto the Lord and a thousand to the Lord is like a day unto us. So while it seems like it's been 10 years for you, 20 years for you, however long that is. In the sight of the Lord, it's been just a few seconds. It's been just a few minutes. So anytime that God is preparing you and you begin to resist, God is going to say, you know what? I'll let you, when you're ready, if that takes you five years, I'm ready. If it takes you 10 years, I'm ready. If it takes you 20, 30, 40, 50, it took the children of Israel 
40 years for them to enter the promised land. Now, the 40 years in the sight of God could have been just one minute. Because God is not confined to time. So I want to say to you is that what is God preparing you for today? Are you passing the test? Because God will always give you a test before it elevates you. The test will always come before a promotion. You know, God will look at certain things. And sometimes when you think you passed the test, God said, nope, you got to take it over again. And there are times when you think, man, I blew it. I completely blew it. God is saying, you know what? This time, that's exactly what I was looking for. So what is the test that God is putting you through? What is God preparing you for in this time and season in your life? If you don't know what that is, trust me, the enemy will come at you from different angles, from different things. You got to understand something. When God begins to test you in a specific area and you're responding to those, Satan doesn't know what God is doing. All he can do is observe your response. So when he realized that God is testing you with about being obedient, whatever the error that is, he would try to bring things around you that would make you to be dis disobedient. Again, the enemy can not read your thoughts. He can not read your mind. So when God is testing you in a specific area, he is the enemy is going to bring things in that same area because what attracts God attracts the devil. What let me say this again. Listen, what attracts God attracts the devil because they're spirit beings. They don't function the way that we function. They don't think the way that we think. Right. So when something attracts God. When God sees that this person is destined for greatness, look at Job. Job's obedience attracted God. Job's obedience attracted Satan. So both spirit beings were attracted because of Job's obedience, because of Job's faithfulness. One of the things that the enemy does is when he realizes that the blessing of God is in your life. When he realized that God is planning to do something, when he gets a little wind of it. So how does the enemy get a little wind of what God is getting ready to do? There's so many people that's gotten so many prophetic words before, right? God is going to do this. God is going to do that, right? Or not even, even not, let's say minus the prophetic words. Let's just take a person, for example, that is not a Christian. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus. They don't follow him. They just, you know, have skills. They have abilities. They have things that they want to accomplish in life. Okay. So now you have this person that wants to do something great in life. If they're not a Christian, let's put it like that. So now God is standing on the side and the devil is standing on the side. And the Bible said that the gift come with that repentance. So there are people that are prophetic that God has given them that gift. He's not going to take that gift back. They've already tapped into something because God gave it to them. There are people that are athletic. There are people that are brilliant. God gave them the gift. Listen, the devil has never given a person a gift any day in their life. Satan doesn't give gifts. He gives counterfeit. So when a person is planning to do something great, whether they're secular or whether they're Christian, the enemy watches from behind, especially secular people. He sees that, okay, this person, they're going somewhere. Their gift, they've tapped into it and they're different from the rest. They're not the same as anybody else. So what I need to do is what do I do to position myself to win them over? And that is why the Bible said this. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? but lose his soul. So when people have gifts and abilities, as they begin to develop those gifts and abilities, God is watching. The enemy is watching. And at some point in time in your journey, whether even if you're not a Christian, you're going to have to make a decision whose side that you want to go with. You can't be in the middle. You either, listen, by virtue of choosing the world you've automatically cut yourself from the lord 
and the flip side of it by virtue of trusting the Lord and submitting to the Lord Jesus, you've automatically just cut the enemy out of your, your, um, your life. So you have to choose what direction that you're going. Your preparation is going to determine what path that you take. And there's so many people right now that they're going in a different path because they want to satisfy what works for them. We live in a world that people want to do what's best for me. It's all about me. It's all about me. And the enemy just understands. He knows this from studying you. The enemy have studied your bloodline for generations. This is an ancient spirit. He studied your bloodline. So he knows exactly what your great, great, great grandparents a thousand years ago, who you're connected to, right? He studied from, I mean, we don't know how long, how far back he studied, but they keep detailed records in the realm of the spirit. God is keeping record of what you're doing. Satan is keeping record of what you're doing. And at some point in time, when it comes to your, your purpose, your preparation, the enemy is going to see what caused your ancestors to suffer, what caused your ancestors to fall, what caused them to deviate from the will of God. He would try to apply the same techniques. He tried to apply the same methodology to you. So in your preparation, you have to understand and ask yourself this question. What am I preparing for or what is God preparing me for and what obstacles did my ancestors go through? Now, you may not know what challenges that your ancestors went through, but I promise you they went through something. And the same thing that they went through, the enemy is going to bring that thing back to you. Have you ever seen some people that is something like out the blue? You know, they start dealing with uh, some form of uh, addiction. And you think like, wow, did this thing just start right now? No, it just didn't start right now. It's always been there for generations. It's always been in the bloodline. So when God begins to prepare you, he's going to hide you. Now, one of the challenging things when God hides you is that he isolates you. And not too many people like isolation. You have so many people, they do not want to be isolated. And sometimes your biggest breakthrough will come during your season of isolation. Let me repeat that again. Sometimes, most of the times when God is preparing you to do something great, when God is preparing you for a global ministry, when God is preparing you to change lives around the world, your biggest breakthrough will come during your moments of isolation. Because when you're isolated, you don't have the distractions. You don't have this one coming in the air. You don't have this one going all over. Like God put you in a place that all that you have to do is just to follow him. And sometimes that's in the physical place, which we'll take a look in a minute. So God has been preparing you for a reason. So your preparation is always going to go from easy to difficult. Right. From easy to difficult, because that's how God does things. You know, God want to ease you into certain things. Right. So you can be able to go from little, 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 and then you advance. And that's how the process works. God never just put everything heavy on you the first time because he understands that you will not be able to bear the burden that comes with that. Right. And as I mentioned before. Your treatment, the process is not always going to be the same. So you have to pay attention to understand how is God training me? My training process, what does that look like for me? Don't put your eyes on anybody else. Focus on your training with him. So when it goes from easy to hard, now God is going to train you in stages. God always trained people in stages. And when God begins to train you in stages, you're going to realize that as you go through those stages, you learn something from one stage to the next. The Bible said that we we'll go from faith to faith, faith to faith. Right. So as you go from faith to faith, different times, different seasons, 
God hopes that you're going to learn something because what you learned in the previous um, stage, you need to apply that in the next stage and so on and so forth. So whatever challenges that you face in stage one, by the time that you get to stage three, God is expecting that at stage three, the preparation that you've already gotten from stage one and two should not be the same challenges that you cannot overcome in stage three. When you get to stage three and God realizes that the challenges that you should, you know, should overcame uh, for whatever reason you decide that, you know what, you're tired, you're fed up, you give up. God is going to say, OK, we got to go back. We got let's go back. Let's go back. Let's backtrack here. Let's backtrack. And this has happened so many times in the body that you will see people that God elevate to great heights, elevate to great level. And then all of a sudden they just drop off the face of the earth. Because sometimes people get so caught up into themselves that God said, I've elevated you to this point in this position, but your heart has been changed. This is not the heart that you had when you started this training. And because your heart, your mind has been changed. God is saying, I got to take you back to step one. I got to take you back to phase one. And you got to start the process all over again. You got to start all over again and God will continue to bring you back to the same place as many times as you want to go back there. It's not up to him. Listen, God desires to promote you. That is why John 10, 10 said that I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. God doesn't have to wait for you to be sick to prove himself to be a healer or to be poor to prove that he can provide for you. We we'll live in this world that you think that, oh, man, we have to be go through hard times in order to meet God. No, you don't have to go through hard times to meet God. It just so happens that most of the times we meet God when we're going through hard times, because that is the only time that we're going to pay attention to God. That is the only time that we're going to listen to God. When people are going through hardships in life, when things don't make sense, when things are not working out in their lives and they're distraught, they're frustrated, they're depressed, they have all those different things and challenges going on that is the time that they pay attention to God and that's when God can get their attention but it is not the will of God for you to be frustrated for you to be stressed out for you to be confused that is not the will of God for your life God desires so much more of you so he's preparing you God is preparing you and I want you to look at yourself and your situation right now I want you to ask yourself this question. What is God preparing me for? What is God preparing me for? And I want you to get a pen and paper. I need you to write that down. Write down what are some of the things that you believe in your heart that God is preparing you for in this season in your life. When you understand what those things are, then you begin to pay attention to all, each one. So, for example, if I tell you that I want you to take a test. And I don't tell you anything about that test. I don't tell you if it's a, a, a test that you got to read questions, is if it's open ended. I don't tell you the subject. I don't tell you anything. I just say to you, you got to take a test without any other information there. How can you prepare for something? There is app like you can't prepare for something like that because you don't know. You're going to try to guess and prepare for so many things. And the things that you prepare for may not even be part of that test but if i say to you that you're going to have a test on so-and-so subjects right you're going to have a test in math and writing and reading now you have something to prepare for and that's what the lord does he's going to pick out a few areas in your life typically god will always put a big emphasis in one major area of your life at a time now, it might be one major and then two minor, but there's always going to be one specific area in your life that God will produce a test through. God will take you through a test. There's always one major in every season of your life. God will highlight a specific area that you need to pay attention to. Unfortunately, so many times, anytime that God highlights a specific area of our lives that we need to deal with, we either run from it or ignore it. Right. And the problem is that when you ignore problems, they just get worse. 
When you run from problems, they will follow you wherever you go. People think sometimes, you know what, I'm having a problem in this particular city or this particular state or this particular person or whatever it is. So they're going to, you know what, let me leave this country. So there have been so many people that have left and went to a completely different country and a completely different continent. But guess what? The problem that they left in their home country followed them wherever they landed. Or sometimes people say this, you know what? I can't deal with this relationship. I'm sick of this person. I don't do, you know, whatever. And they end that relationship. And you know what? And they go to other ones. They realize that the same issues that they dealt with with their previous relationship that they never fixed, it follows them until they're able to fix that. So sometimes you have people, they'll go through four, five, six, seven, eight, nine relationships, but they are dealing with the exact same thing over. It just keeps repeating itself. It keeps repeating over and over and over again. So I want you to look at your life. Be honest with yourself and ask yourself this question. In this season of my life, what is God preparing me for? Listen, if you can figure that out, you've already won half of the battle in life. If you can figure out the test that God is taking you through every season, you are so advanced. You are so ahead of everybody else because most people, they don't know. Most people have no clue what God is preparing them for. And some people have a clue, but they ignore it or they run away from it. The worst thing that you can do is to ignore it or run away from it. Because anytime that you run away from it, it's going to follow you. And it's going to cause so much delays. So that is the first thing. What is God preparing me for in this season of my life? And what steps do I need to take to make sure that I'm well prepared? Is God calling you to be more loving? Is God calling you to spend more time in prayer or fasting and reading your word? And whatever that thing is. Make adjustments based on your preparation, because if you don't adjust based on your preparation, you're going to fail the test. You are going to fail the test every single time. Now, the next thing is this. God prepares you to protect you. OK, God prepares you because I mean, God hides you because he wants to protect you. If you look at Matthew chapter two, verse 13. Now, this is when the, the wise men came to baby Jesus, right? After they left, they didn't go back to Herod because he wanted to kill them. They went to their own country. So when you look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, it says this. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child's life to destroy him. The enemy wants to destroy you. So sometimes what God would do is prepare a way of escape for you. But so many times the same thing that God wants to make a way of escape for you is the same thing that you keep going back to. The same thing that God wants to deliver you from are the same things that you always desire and you always go back to. The same places that God wants to remove you from for your own for your, your own safety, you want to go back to that. God had a reason why the angel appeared and said, "Listen, for your protection of this child, I need you to run." The angel he didn't say, "You know, I need you to, to I need you to take it easy. You know, take another you know another two weeks out, take another month." But he said, "Listen, you got to get going right now because God sees things that we do not see and will never see. So when God hides you." Is because there is a preparation that's went through and also a protection. There are people that are connected to you that need you to be alive. There are people that need you to be healthy. They need, need you to be in your right mind. They need you to be in a specific place with the Lord because you are connected to them and they're connected to you. There are people right now in other parts of this world that you've never met and may never meet, but they are connected to you. So God wants to protect you so you can stay alive for them so when God is hiding you 
He's protecting you. And also God is protecting you from yourself. Do you know that sometimes we can be our own greatest disaster? We can be our own greatest destruction, right? We can self-destruct. So God has to find a way to protect you from you. I know that sounds crazy, but God wants to protect you from you. Because if God were to allow you to do things how you think things need to be done, you're going to be a wreck. Look at people today. Look at the world today. See how much wreck people are in today. They are in such a massive wreck in their lives because they they have not allowed the Lord to protect them from themselves. Your biggest enemy, your biggest challenger is not the devil, is yourself, is you. The only person that can really destroy you, the greatest, right, is you. You can destroy, you can cause more harm and destruction to yourself more than anything else. You can do that. Not God, not the devil. Yes, they can play a role in that. They can play a role in that. But if the devil don't have a door to come in your life, he can't destroy you. If the devil is not given permission to come into your life, whether God allows him or you open up certain doors, the enemy can do nothing to you. That's why when he went to to and, and uh, with the sons of God, he said, look, look at Job. You've protected him. You put a hedge of thorns around. You put a hedge of protection around Job. So there's nothing I can do. So when God put a hedge of protection around you, nobody can harm you. Nobody can hurt you at all. And there are times to that God wants to protect you from certain places. There are certain places that God knows that if you go to this specific place, your life will be a nightmare. If you move here to this city, if you move to this town or if you get this job or whatever it is, God knows that if you take that step, it will wreck your life. So you have so many people today. God has been trying to protect you from a specific region for whatever reason. But you decided that you're going to be disobedient and do what works for you. So God says, you know what? You, you, you know, you're going to be disobedient. I am going to let you do whatever you want to do. God wants to protect you from certain places. You cannot heal from the place where you got sick. In other words, if there's an environment that's not conducive to your growth, to your destiny, that's not connected to your destiny, and you still live in that, why are you living in a place that is not producing any fruit? Why are you living in a place that's not making any progress for you? Why are you living in a place that's only taking you backwards? There is so many people right now that God has been trying to protect you and God is trying to remove you from a physical location. Right. But you still stuck there because you want to satisfy you. You want to do what works for you. And any time that you stay in a place that God has been trying to remove you from, nothing is going to work. You're always going to be struggling. You're you're always going to suffer you won't have any peace you won't have any joy all the doors will always stay closed because god is saying i don't want you in this place you got to go and i have seen so many people so many people they've been living in the wrong places and never get a breakthrough and then the moment that they will go where God want them to be, all of a sudden, things begin to happen for them, left and right, left and right. And there's some situations, too, that God wants to protect you from. So he's going to hide you because if he allows you to be part of that situation, it's going to wreck your life. There's certain th situations that God just don't want you to get involved in at all. But again, disobedience and pride you know i'm gonna do this you can't tell me nothing this is my will you can use your will that's fine 
But if she using your will, you better be ready for the consequences that come with it. So number two, number one is God is preparing you. The second reason why God hides you is that God is wants to protect you. The third reason is that God is preparing the people that will be connected to you. So the third reason why God hides people is that God has been preparing people that will work with you in the calling that he's called you to do to your destiny. Right. The right people matter when you do business. The right people matter when you do ministry. The right people matter if you're going to get anywhere in life. If you're going to go far in life, you need the right people in your circle. There's an African proverb I heard that says this. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. That is so true. If you want to go fast in life, Man, just do what you think works for you. Take whatever steps you think is best for you. Make whatever moves that satisfy you. Do whatever you think is going to work for you. But you're going to realize that when you do that, sooner or later, you're going to get burned out and you're going to get stuck. You get burned out and you get stuck. Because when you go alone, the amount of energy that it takes for you to keep going, you got to keep that up, right? In the beginning, I've seen so many people that they want to go fast. They're going along. They're going, 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 going. After a few weeks going, after a few months, by the time they get to a year, two, three, four years, they slow down so much that they say, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't fight this anymore. I give up. That is what happens when you go fast. But when you want to go far, you gather a few people. That is why my prayer has always been, Lord God, connect me with destiny relationships, with kingdom relationships. That is one of my prayers. And I pray that you pray the same thing too, that God will connect you with kingdom relationships, that God will connect you with people that will love you, that will support you, that will pray for you. Yes, you're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. You're going to mess up. But then you're going to have people that will hold you by the hand and say, you know what? Keep going. We're here for you. Just keep pushing. We'll love you. And they're going to encourage. They're going to motivate you to keep on going. Yeah, that's right, uh, Vanessa. That Lone Ranger mentality. It's not a good mentality to have. I can do it all by myself. I don't need anybody. That is a debt in the place for you to be in. And you got to be careful, too, about the bridges that you burn. Sometimes God will connect you with a person. That is that is that person will be the only bridge he is going to allow to get you to the next level. And sometimes we we'll burn that bridge with those people. we we'll burn them. We don't care about that. we we'll just burn them down. And you find yourself in situations that you need that bridge to cross over. But unfortunately, the only bridge that you needed to cross over was burnt by you. That is a painful place to be in. I'm telling you, that is a painful place that you ever want to find yourself to realize that the bridge that God designed for you to cross over, you've burnt that bridge and now you're stuck. What are you going to do? Your pride has gotten you stuck. Your disobedience have gotten you stuck. Your attitude have gotten you stuck. Now nothing is moving for you. All the doors in your life are closed. Listen, there are people that God will put in your life. These are destiny helpers, destiny connections. They are meant to unlock doors for you. And let me tell you something. God will sometime assign one person that will unlock your next level for you. So you better be careful how you treat people. I am extremely careful how I treat people. I don't care who you are. I strive to treat everybody the same, love everybody, right? Of course, with boundaries, but you have to be so careful about the way that you treat people 
because the person that you cuss today, the person that you disrespect today, the person that you abandon today, the person that you mistreat today will be the only person that God will allow you to use to get to your next level. And until you go back on your knees before that person, every door in your life will stay closed. You got to be careful how you deal with people. You have to be careful. Stop having this attitude of, you know what? I don't care, man. I could do, I could do this by myself. I can, I figure it out. How's that working for you so far? How's that going for you so far? Trying to figure it out by yourself. It's not going well at all. And when you're around the right people, they're going to help you to understand what you need to be doing, right? All of us have strengths and weaknesses. I have some, my strength, my weaknesses, and I'm sure that you have some. And I'm sure that, you know, if you ask some people, they'll tell you, you know, this one's not good at that, that one's not good at this. But you don't need people that's going to focus on your weakness. You don't need that. How does it feel for you to be around people that all the time they complain about what you don't do right? They complain about what you don't like. They always complaining. You don't need that. There are people right now that are in the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s that they shut down. They burn a bridge in their 20s and 30s to someone that could help them. And they're in their 70s and 80s and probably, in, you know, older than that. And they're still in the same state. No progress in the past 30, 40, 50, 60 years of their life. Matter of fact, their entire lives, they have made no significant progress forward. They've probably taken maybe three steps forward, 70 backwards. It is so important to understand that you need people, not just people, you need the right connections in life. So I always tell my kids, I always tell them, listen, you don't treat anybody different because they may not have what you have or whatever the, the, the case is. And I am so mindful about the way that I treat people because I don't know where my kids are going to be five years from now, 10 years from now. I don't know what circumstance that they're going to face. So if I'm mistreating other people, right? If I'm disrespecting other people and I'm talking down to other people, listen, what goes around comes around. It may not come back to you, but I promise you, if you're mistreating people today, listen, your kids, your grandkids, they will end up paying for that. 20 times over they will suffer because of what we're doing today that is why it is so important that you pray that God connect you with the right people that is why it's so vital that you have a heart for people you have a genuine heart for people you have a heart for people People are always going to say stuff to you. They're always going to do something. They're always going to hurt you. They're always going to lie to you. They're always going to, but you still have to have a heart for people. I know what it's like to be hurt. I know what it's like to be abandoned. I know what it's like to be disrespected at the highest level. I know, but I still have a heart for people. I genuinely just love people. No strings attached. And when I do things for people, I'm not always trying to, you know, what am I going to gain from them? What's this going to get me? No, just do things. So God, God hides you because God wants to make sure that the people that you're supposed to be connected with are prepared. And also get you prepared to meet them. Because if you're not prepared to meet the people that God is connecting with for your destiny, listen, it's going to cause so much havoc in your life. If you meet them before time, it won't work. If you meet them after time, it won't work. You have to meet them at the right time, which I'm going to cover that in just a moment. You need genuine people. Genuine people. One of the things that I just I just can't stand. I cannot stand negativity. I'm allergic to negativity. I am allergic to negative people at the highest level. 
at the highest level. I am so allergic to negative people, to negativity, to negative situations that I am so allergic to that. So I don't allow that in my atmosphere at all. I don't care what is going on in my life. I don't care how bad things look. I don't care whatever it is. I refuse to be negative. I ref that is just innate in me. That is just in my DNA. Like I've made up my mind in such a way that I refuse to be negative. That's just second nature to me. I refuse to be negative. Walk around. You see some people like you can't even say how to like they just always so mean. You know, I refuse to be negative and you have to refuse to be negative as well. So anything or anyone that brings any type of negativity in my atmosphere, I get rid of them quick. I don't care who it is. I get rid of them. If I can't change the situation, then I, I remove myself from it. Right. And even at home with like my kids, like they're they're They know everybody in my home notice dad don't like negativity. I'm a very positive person. My outlook on life is always positive. I don't see the glass as half empty. I see the glass as half full. Some people see the glass, oh man, they focus more on the part that doesn't have water and it's always empty instead of focusing on the part that, that's full. I don't look at things like that. So as I'm dealing with people, as I'm connecting with different people, I don't allow negativity in my atmosphere at all. I don't. And I don't apologize for that. I would get rid of whoever it is super fast. I would rather keep a lazy person around me than a negative person around me, honestly. So I just say all that to say this. You want to connect with the right people. So God has been hiding you because God is getting those people right in different places. In different countries, in different cities, in different situations. You want to be able to make sure when you meet those people that you're ready to connect with them. Right. And then number four is to prepare the place. To prepare the right place. Now, I've talked about this already. Sometimes God will hold you back because the place that he wants you to be in. It's not quite ready yet. So it's not that you're not ready. It's not that you haven't been prepared, but it's just that the atmosphere for the place that he wants to send you to is just not quite ready yet. So you have to learn to be patient. A prime example of this, when the children of Israel walking around Jericho, they couldn't just, you know, they, they couldn't just went there and just invaded it. Right. God needed time to prepare the place so God told them to walk around just keep walking around do this don't say anything keep your mouth shut just keep walking around and as they were walking around the Lord was preparing things God was shifting things God was moving things God was turning things around as they were walking around the angels were doing things maneuvering things they were again whatever to get in place for the miracle to happen so I am saying to you today God is preparing a place for you there's some of you that that place has already been prepared it's already been prepared now it's time for you to go to that place. And I'm going to share with you, maybe at another time, what happens when it's your time of rising. What are some of the signs that you're going to notice when God begins to elevate you? Right. So now that God has been hiding you for a while, God has been covering you for a while. What are some of the signs that lets you know that, OK, it's time for you to go out in the forefront? But God only hides those that are going to be influential. God only hides those that are going to have high impact in the world. God only hides those that are destined to do great things. So if God has been hiding you, let me tell you something. God has something amazing for you to accomplish. God has something great for you to do. So during the waiting period, don't get frustrated. I know it's so easy. 
to get frustrated when God is hiding you. It's so easy to get angry when God is hiding. It is so easy to get like, Lord, I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting. When is this going to happen? It is so easy. But if you would just recognize that God always hides his best to get them ready for the best. God is preparing something great. Matter of fact, he's already prepared something great for you because you're going to be great. He just wants to make sure that when it's time for him to unveil that thing to you, you're going to be ready for it. Have you seen this happen before? When you look in the film industry in Hollywood. In the music industry and in other industries in the fashion industry, whatever it is, right? But more so like in the music industry, sometimes in sports. Have you seen that there are kids or people that got started acting as kids, right? And they got shot into stardom at a very young age. When you look at them today, you feel sorry for them. You see their lives are so messed up. They, they got caught up in so much because they got elevated before their time they weren't ready to deal with all that fame they weren't ready to deal with all that fortune so you have all those people now that as kids they have millions of dollars in their account they have the freedom to do whatever to say whatever anything goes with them now that they're older right their lives are so messed up because they never had any boundaries for them to stick within. And they did whatever they wanted. And now their lives are messed up. I have seen this happen all the time. If you go before your time, you will regret it. You will crash. If you go before the Lord releases you, you are going to fall. You are going to crash and it is going to be a public fall, a public fail. It is going to be seen by the public. You're going to get humiliated. Even though God can always restore you back. But I said, Lord. I don't want to go before my time. So God had to hold, hold, hold you back. God had to hold me back. Right. Because your purpose is so much greater than you. Your destiny is so much greater than you. There are a lot of you right now as you come to a close here. That you've been so frustrated. Because it seemed like God is taking forever for this thing to happen. God knows exactly what he is doing. God knows exactly what he is doing the timing of God is one of the best protections that we can get. Can you imagine when you look at your life right now, there are certain things that you wanted to have maybe a year ago, two years ago, months ago, that when you look at those same things right now with a different lens, you are so grateful that that thing did not go through whatever that thing was. You are so grateful that God blocked it, that God stopped it. Had that thing gone through a few weeks, a few months, or a few years ago, you would have been in a completely different place and it would have wrecked your life. I know for me, I am. When I look back at certain situations, different things, different areas, not just one. And I'm like, wow, God, I thank you so much. I thank you so much that that didn't go through before, because if that would have went through, I would have wrecked my life. And so many of us today are wrecking our lives because of that. Wrecking our lives because of that. So God has been hiding you for a reason. God has been hiding you for a purpose. Don't get discouraged. Don't get down. I know it's easier said than done. But your time of rising is here. And in another session, another service, I'm going to go through what that looks like. But God has prepared you for such a time as right now. There is something inside of you. That God had to get ready. There's something inside of you that God wanted to make sure that you were at a certain place mentally. See, a lot of times people don't realize this. 
God first have to get you to a place mentally until you allow the Lord Jesus to transform your mind to get you to a place mentally. You will remain in the same condition for years to come. You're going to stay in the same thing over and over again because your mind has to get transformed. Your mind has to get changed. If your mind is not changed, then you're going to keep repeating the same things over and over again. And that's why they say that, you know, money doesn't change a person. It just reveals who they are. And there's so many people today that when they were poor, they did something else. But the moment that they start to get into wealth, they completely changed. They didn't change. That's who they've always been. It just revealed their true nature and character. You know, just like I've said this before. That when you when it looks like pe people have changed, people just didn't change. Right. People just became who they, they were before they met you. They real person, they real character, the, the real them finally came out. And that is what happened. The real person finally came out. So as we as we come to a close and as we pray. I want you to ask yourself. Four questions based on what we just learned today. Number one. What is God preparing me for? You can write this down, please write, write this down and then go back and write what you think that's all right. The answers to these. The first question that I want you to ask yourself as we get ready to pray is what is God preparing me for? This is going to shed light on the steps that you need to take. Number two. What or who is God protecting me from? Listen, sometimes there are people that don't need to be part of your life for a season. They don't need to be part. I don't care whether it's family, whether it's friends, whoever it is. There are certain people that in certain seasons in your life, they do not need to be around you because they would distract you. They would discourage you and they will completely um, delay what God wants to do. And sometimes they will abort the plans of God in your life. So who or what is God trying to protect me from? Number two. Number three. Who is God sending and removing in my life? The question is this. Who is God sending in my life and who is God removing from my life? Because there are certain people in your life that God has to, God has to remove them. God just have to remove them. their time in your life is expired. Sometimes it's for a season. Other times it's just permanent. But you have to understand and ask yourself this question. Who is God adding to my life? Who is God removing from my life in this season? Number three. Number four. Where does God want me to be? This is a physical location, not just mental or, you know, imaginal or whatever. But this is a physical place. Lord, where do you want me to establish? Where do you want me to be? In the city or the state or the country that you are, is that where God want you to be? If it is, that's awesome. If it's not, then you pray and say, Lord. I know that I'm feeling that you want me to go there. You want me to do this, where, wherever that place is. What do I need to do? So when you ask yourself these four questions, it's going to bring so much clarity in your life. And the more clarity that you have, the more speed that you take, the more faster that you can go now. So once you understand these four things, again, I tell people, look, look write it down, look. I have a notebook here, as you can see in my notebooks, I have quite a few, one, two, three. I have like a bunch of notebooks here. I'm in, a I'm in the tech industry, but I'm old school because I like to still write down a sheet of paper. It's just something about that. I just like to, I don't know. It's just something about that for me, you know, but I have a bunch of notebooks with different areas of my life. What is God saying to me about this particular area? What adjustments do I need to make? What moves do I need to make? I, I, all those are things that I write down and I'm saying to you, what are your next steps in your life? 
What are you going to do next with your life? What is God telling you to do with your life? How do you plan to accomplish those things? Where does God want you to be? These are all vital questions that you have to start to think about. You have to think about these questions and start to address them one by one. And God will give you clarity. See, I like to help people understand before they go into prayer. A lot of times people just go into prayer and they just start praying, praying, you know, and they get no results. They get no answer. Nothing changes. This happened all the time. So when I do my teachings before we pray, that's why during our prayer time, before I start to pray, I want you to understand why are you praying? What are you praying for? You need results, man. I've seen so many people. They pray without results. They pray without results. They pray without results at all. This got to stop. I'm at a place in my life that I, I get results because of my relationship with the Lord. I get results because of my walk with God. You have to develop your thing with the Holy Spirit. That thing that you guys have that nobody else understands. That's just between the both of you. When the Holy Spirit says this or impresses something on your heart, like you guys, you just get each other. You have to develop that thing for you and the Holy Spirit and nobody else. This has to do with nothing with nobody else, but just the both of you. Your thing, what is your thing with God? What is that thing that you have? That understanding that you don't have to say anything. The Holy Spirit could impress something in your heart and you know immediately what that what that is. You know immediately what that's about. What is that thing? I pray that today that you're going to find out what that thing is, because that thing, it saved me from so much headache, so much unnecessary drama that saved me from there, because I have learned to develop that closeness with the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah, sometimes I get it wrong. I'm human like everybody else. Sometimes I get it wrong, but that doesn't happen too often. Right. I've learned to minimize the misses that I have with God. I've learned to minimize that. So what is your thing with the Lord? God has been hiding you. But God is saying that he wants to bring you to the forefront. And we're going to cover that next time. You know, I pray that your heart has been open. Your eyes have been open. Your, your mind has been open. And as I close out in prayer. Again, I'm going to pray for you in this four areas. The first one is this, and I want you to join me in prayer too. Lord God, what are you preparing me for? That's the first prayer point. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. Lord God, I know that you have a plan and purpose for my life. But Lord, what are you preparing your people for? Father, I pray that you're going to give clarity. What exactly are you preparing them for in this season in their lives? Father, I pray that you will give them strategic details of the next steps of what you're preparing them for. Lord God, I pray right now that they will have such clarity to understand exactly what you're preparing them for. I pray right now, Lord God, that you make it clear to them. Prayer point number two. What is God protecting you from? Who is God protecting you from? Lord, I pray that you're going to show them who you're protecting them from, who you're adding in their lives and who you're removing. And Father God, anytime that you add someone in their lives, that they will be open to that person. They'll open up their heart. And anytime that you remove someone from their lives, Father God, they will let that person go. That they will let you to do what you need to do in their lives. That whoever is meant to be in their lives will come back and will stay. Whoever is not meant to be in their lives will go and stay away. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would do that for them. Prayer point number three. Father, I pray that you are going to connect them with the right people. Lord, the right people. Father God, connect them with the right people. Oh, Lord God, only you can do that connection. Only you can do that connection, Father, that anyone that they're not meant to connect with, Lord God, don't let that connection happen. 
I sever every ties right now, every connection right now with the wrong crowd, with the wrong people in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number four, the right place. Lord, I pray that you will lead them into the right place, wherever they're supposed to serve, wherever they're supposed to be in a physical location, Lord God that you will open up the doors in that area, all those, wherever it is, Lord God, that you would open up the doors for that and that they will be obedient to make that move as they trust you. In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you, Father, for this day. I pray that their lives will never be the same, that as they look unto you, you're the author and you're the finisher of their faith. You're everything to them. You're everything to us. I thank you, Lord God, that even as we've been heading in this season, that we're going to continue to wait on you and trust in you because the day of our parents is already here. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I've given you guys a few things here for you to do. And I pray that you take that seriously. Seriously. 